It's the third day of the Frosh Week that precedes my first year of university, and I am very excited. <laughs> like, like very, very excited. I've taken, I've spent the last two days just talking to everyone around me in this kind of enthusiastic way um, about, you know, how we're all going to learn so much together, and this is going to be this life-changing experience, and I'm just totally jacked up, if I think that's the right term. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I did, it didn't really, I didn't get here by accident. I'd taken the year off um, after high school, and I've done, I did a, uh, a volunteer program where everything was about being open-minded and, and, you know, helping, and, and I just, you know, ate it up with a spoon. I think my alternative school roots really, uh, you know, <laughs> helped with that one. And, um, and, we, and on top of that, I had just come off my third summer as a camp counselor, where I just won an award basically for enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on my resume. <laughs> And I am just ready to go, and I take this energy with me to a pickup ultimate frisbee game that is being held. And I don't know anyone there, but I immediately identify myself as that guy. I am running all over the field. I'm cheering for both teams, you know. <laughs> I'm saying, like, after this, we should go for ice cream and exchange emails, you know? Like, I love this guy, then. Jacked up, and uh, and I don't know, you know. I think people didn't really know what to do with me, but I was playing the game, um, so they let me keep playing. And um, and about 20 minutes in, I am way downfield, and my team gets the disc, and I, you know, make myself known, and someone sees me and throws the frisbee to me. And it is immediately obvious to myself and everyone else that I am never <laughs> going to catch this frisbee. There's no way. But that's the old me thinking. <laughs> that's not right now. Anything is possible. These are the days of our lives, Elliot, <laughs> thinking. And I refuse to think like that anymore, so I just start running faster. <laughs> and it's way overhead, and it's cutting away, and... I'm never going to get it, but I keep picking up speed <laughs> until I become like this freight train of enthusiasm. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> and for the record, I would not believe if it hadn't happened to me what I'm about to tell you next. Because what happened next is I got to a speed <laughs> that I could not keep up with myself. <laughs> I remember looking down and my torso was just way out in front of my legs. And I went down violently. Like really hard, my head and my shoulder hit the ground at the same time and I remember feeling this zing you know, up in my upper chest, shoulder area, but I'm still so jacked up on adrenaline that I just jump up immediately. I'm like, woo! That was awesome, guys. Let's turn around. We sure can. And, and, and everyone's running towards me, concerned. And, and I can feel my body just curled around the spot where I felt the, the zing. And I reach up and I touch my collarbone. And it is just dangling. <laughs> Attached to nothing. And they get there, and they're like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Might need to take a breather, maybe do some D for a while, a little defense. Um, <laughs> did break my collarbone, though. Definitely broke my collarbone. So we're going to have to play around that. And, uh, and they didn't believe me. Um, they were like, someone said, if you broke your collarbone, you would be on the ground screaming. 
And that was an option I honestly hadn't considered at that point. <laughs> it was starting to sound pretty good. They get me to lie down, and, and then the adrenaline washes away, and then the pain comes in, and, and it's excruciating. And every move I make makes it worse, and it's clear, you know, I can't play this game anymore. <laughs> One of the organizers of the event backs up his minivan onto the field, and the other players help load me into the back. <laughs> and we take off for the hospital. Or actually, first we went to the uh, campus clinic. <laughs> As it turns out, if it's not an STI, not a whole lot they can do. <laughs> On the way to the hospital, me and the driver get into this conversation, the type of conversation I only ever find myself in when something really extraordinary has happened and we're still sort of in the midst of it and there's a calm and, and I'm lying in the back and we're talking about everything from politics and philosophy and religion. We got to religion pretty quick. Um, it turns out that this game, this frisbee game that I had uh, partaken in, was not just some frisbee game, but in fact was put on by an organization called Campus for Christ. <laughs> if you don't know, Campus for Christ, they exist, their, their sole mandate is to convert non-Christian students to Christianity. And now I'm in the back of this minivan saying stuff like, you know, I think God is, is great, but I just don't know if he's for me. <laughs> Maybe something will get me there someday. And this, the guy driving is one of the organizers, one of like the, the main, I don't know, head honchos in uh, Campus for Christ, formerly Campus Crusade for Christ. They decided to dial it back at some point. <laughs> and he's, I assume, just basically salivating. Because I'm just this broken bird in the back just talking about how I could maybe love Jesus. <laughs> And um, he takes me to the hospital. It is indeed a broken collarbone. And uh, he drives me back to my dorm, um, which is really nice of him. The next day, you know, I try to keep it going. Um, the first couple days, as I said, I was just talking to everyone. And, and I tried to, to be I'm like, maybe I'll be really enthusiastic guy who wants to talk to you with a broken collarbone. Um, but it, it really hurt the collarbone, and I didn't, I wasn't able to keep it going. Um, and that became a trend. Um, classes started, and I had this enthusiasm still, but over time, it started to, to wear and then slip away and eventually fall away completely. Um, a lot of that had to do with just taking first year economics. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and as this is happening, I, I regularly um, run into the guy, the driver, whose name I forget. Um, so we can call him Mark or, or Matthew, or sometimes I like to refer to him as Ecclesiastes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would see Ecclesi, oh boy. Um, I would see him, you know, every couple weeks, couple months, you know, around campus, and every time, we have the same conversation where we catch up and eventually we would get back to that thing, you know, like, do I believe yet? You know, am I gonna go all the way? And, um, <laughs> and every time I became a little more sick of it and a little less willing to engage. And honestly, he became a little bit more desperate every single time. Like he sort of turned into this like used car, car salesman who just like, what can I do to get you into God's grace today, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I began just like, you know, not being super excited um, when, when I saw him on campus. And uh, the last time I saw him was on a bus, um, I think halfway through, the second semester of my second year, and at this point, I don't believe in anything anymore. I don't know why I'm in school. 
Um, I, I don't, my major doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why I'm doing anything. I don't think the world is savable or maybe even worth saving. <laughs> and I've got my headphones in. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and I see, um, please, um, sitting across from me from the bus in, in my periphery for a second, I just look away and I pretend I don't see him because I really don't want to talk to him. Um, and so I'm just looking dead ahead and I'm really focused on my Elliot Smith or something similarly <laughs> depressing that was playing. And I can't ignore him because he starts just waving his hand in front of my vision. And uh, eventually I take off the headphones and I'm like, oh, please, I didn't see ya. And we start that same conversation and really this time he looks kind of crazy and I keep trying <laughs> to think of topics that won't lead back to the same place. So I knew he was graduating, and I was like, oh, what are you going to do after graduation? He's like, oh, I'm going to go to Korea to talk about God. I like, oh. <laughs> so I, I lied, is what I did. I told him that my bus stop was quite a few earlier than it was, you know, and I said, like, good to see you again. And I got off the bus. And I walked the, way, the rest of the way to class with my headphones in at a pace that I could keep up with. Thank you. <laughs>